hope you didn't go anywhere. I hope you didn't go anywhere. If you're not still here, then you will miss out. Though you won't, because I've got to switch games. I haven't even gotten that bit prepared. Yes, staying out is not such a distancing. Um, right, so that should have counted on my orbit. Let's double check. Right, we are back with Coffee Talk because oh yeah, so this second game was me doing the uh, speed run things for Tadpole. Um, I didn't do any of the story; I just did the mini game. So we are continuing with the story. It's been a while since um, I can't remember where we got up to. alien person was working in the shop to uh, learn about humans and um, hmm, that's a new story okay so we learned how to fly okay happily ever after Ever After Ever After Part 1 by Freya Fatima Oh yeah, they were doing their convention thing and what's this for? And the, the, the Freya was writing a book about my shop Do I want to grow old with you? No, I don't want to do that But I do want to be here with you in this moment stuck in eternal limbo for an infinite loop of this exact hour forever Hell yeah, I do that's probably the last time Romeo remembers having a really meaningful conversation with Juliet. But let's not get f too far ahead of ourselves, dear readers, just like any other story. This one also has a beginning, and it begins... Excuse me. With an introduction. Romeo is a young man of 20. He comes from a quite conservative, but not yet out of touch, family. In other words, they're just like almost every other family in the world. He hates the name his parents gave him. He hates even more knowing that his life is fa so far is fulfilling all the cliches of his fictional namesakes. Falling in love with a girl named Juliet is really just the icing on the cliched cake. Juliet is a young woman of 20. She also comes from a quite conservative but not yet out of touch family. In other words, they're also just like almost every other family in the world. She loves the name her parents gave her. Although she hates the fact that all her life so far is fulfilling half the cliches of her fictional namesakes. Falling in love with a boy named Romeo is unfortunate, but she has no plans to die stupidly over it. Both of them study at the same university. Ugh, this scrolling thing is annoying. Um, and they're definitely not the type of people who'd naturally choose to be friends. Fate, however, in the form of a hip young lecturer with an over-enthusiastic, over-enthusiasm for assigning group projects, an unfortunate sense of humour is what brings them together. 
A simple group assignment is what introduces our young Romeo and Juliet to each other, even after their first fated meeting. And the many more meetings required to finish the assignment, there's no sign that Romeo means anything more to Juliet than a friendly acquaintance she spends a lot of time in the library with. Nor, honestly, does she mean that much more to him. In fact, after she made an ill-judged joke about the literary elephant in the room, she probably means significantly less. But as time goes on and the group assignments keep coming without the lecturer ever assigning new partners, Romeo and Juliet become closer. They both begin to see things in the other that they hadn't noticed before, though for Romeo that is in fact rather frightening. How could they fall for someone like her, and named Juliet no less? I can't accept it, my mind's just playing tricks on me. Again and again, around and around, his thoughts chase himself whenever he sees her. The day is Monday. And Romeo has a class he needs to attend, however something is different. Normally a relatively anxious fellow, he finds going to a class requires a lot of willpower. Today, however, he finds himself hurrying to get there. He knows why, of course, but he refuses to admit it to himself quite yet. The first thing Romeo does when he opens the door is to look at the specific table. The table where Juliet always sits. To his unacknowledged disappointment, the table is empty. Bleep! mutters Romeo under his breath. He doesn't curse, because Juliet is not there, of course. Rather, he curses because noticing this was the first thing he did upon entering the room. After sitting in his usual place, Romeo reopens his book and begins reading. Every time someone opens the door, Romeo immediately turns to look and quietly whispers a curse. Again, he's not cursing because he's disappointed it's not Juliet who enters. He's cursing because he turned to look. A few minutes before the class begins, Juliet finally arrives, announcing herself and her friends with a braying laugh as she does so. That sound used to be one of the most annoying sounds in the world, at least as far as Romeo was concerned. But today it brings a small smile to his face. Bleep! Curses Romeo again after he just realised he smiled at the sound. Is Romeo in love? He probably is, but he doesn't want to admit that. Falling in love with Juliet is dangerous, extremely dangerous. They come from completely different backgrounds, they have different skin colours and they worship different gods. He has no problem with interracial interracial relationships. Of course he doesn't. We never expect it to happen to him. This simply will not do. I need to talk to you. Romeo looks up. Juliet is standing over his table. Her jaw is set, but her eyes are worried and he completely forgets all about his own problems. Uh, what's up? He asks. Can you keep a secret? It's really important. Sure, I guess I can. Good, because I really need someone to talk to. So Juliet sits down and begins telling her story to Romeo. She talks about the problems she's been facing over the past few months, how they affect her study, how he's not the first person she's talked to about this, on and on. Romeo listens to every word. Eventually Juliet stops talking and sits quietly. Romeo thinks that she did that she looks somehow lighter than she did before she began talking. He doesn't know how to react to what she told him. He tries giving her some advice, really stupid advice he thinks as soon as he said it, but he believes it's probably much better than just listening and nodding and watching her walk away. He doesn't think he wants to walk away from him, he, he thinks about this. One thing is for sure, Juliet trusts Romeo as a friend. They've shared a secret now, even though Juliet has shared the same secret with others before him. This still makes Romeo happy, so damn happy. How pathetic am I? being happy because someone I like came and told me she's not. Romeo thinks and then shakes his head like a dog shaking off water. After sharing everything she wanted to share, ah, Juliet starts talking about lighter topics. Soon they are joking freely, the dark mood of earlier almost completely dissipated. Just before Juliet leaves, Romeo asks something. Why did you tell me all that? Well, I don't really know. I think I can trust you and you're one of those rare few people who can talk to people directly without sugarcoating everyone, everything. It's refreshing. She shrugs. I guess that's why. What Juliet says is true, but Romeo finds it amusing that even though he normally speaks directly to everyone, he knows he can't do that with Juliet. He's not himself when she's around, or so he believes. After that conversation, Romeo falls even more helplessly in love with Juliet. It's so stupid, he thinks, as someone who rarely falls so hard for anyone. But Juliet is driving him crazy, and the fact that she makes him feel the closest thing to love he's felt in years. Yet a big wall of culture, norms, and other societal traditions stands between them. Hurts him even more. That is, of course, if Juliet is even into him anyway. 
As weeks go by, Juliet and Romeo become closer. They start telling each other stories more often, but all of these stories are limited to their courses, their friends, and anything at all besides their feelings for each other. She's not into me, she's just an extrovert. She's friendly with everyone, Romeo keeps thinking, and suddenly when he's thinking about it, and it's when he's thinking about that, that suddenly Juliet comes and sits at his table. So you said you wanted to tell me something. It's true, he'd already sent a message to Juliet telling her he wanted to talk about something. Hmm. Oh wow, diving straight in. It's nothing all that important actually, says Romeo. Come on, it's not like you to be so indirect about things. What's wrong with you, boyo? Romeo actually called Juliet to talk about her attitude recently. She's been weird, you see in Romeo's eyes, and it feels like she's getting further away, removing herself from any student activities she's usually partaken. Juliet answers all his questions, all his thoughts and concerns about how she seems to be removing herself from all of the side activities she managed to shrug off or easily explain. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm obsessing over every single thing she does, thinks Romeo. While a pit opens up in his gut at the thought. Is that all? Anything else you want to say? She questions him. Fair is fair, after all. Do you know that I used to like you? The words come out from Romeo's mouth out of the blue. He's horrified, even as he recognises it's a lie. He still likes her now. He doesn't even know why he decided to con confess his feelings right at this random moment. Never mind why he wasn't con why he confessed with half a lie. It wasn't planned at all. But when he heard Juliet say anything else, well, there's definitely one thing Romeo had been planning to say to Juliet for the last few thousand eons, or normal human measure time, since about eight months ago. Juliet shows a flash of surprise and then says, No, I had no idea at all. Why? Why what? Why do you like me? Or did you like me? I mean, there must be a reason. Whoa. Uh, of course there is, Romeo opens his mouth to tell her and pauses. He blinks slowly and closes his mouth again. Or not, I don't know. I think there is, but I'm not sure. I'm sorry, I'm talking gibberish. Gibberish. Juliet doesn't respond to that. Romeo doesn't even dare look at her directly, but he can see out the corner of his eye that she looks dumbfounded. He takes a breath and opens his mouth again, hoping for a lightning strike, divine inspiration or instant death. He isn't picky. Okay, okay, I just... I, I see you as a really strong person, okay? You have a big girly side, but you're also a really strong, independent person. Okay, I get the girly part, but what makes you think I'm strong? Well, just look at how you work with all your assignments and organisations. I definitely could never deal with everything as well as you do, ever. Oh, come on, everyone has something they're good at. You can do some things I can't, that's pretty normal. I know, but I'm still... I'm not sure that's probably what attracts me to you the most. When he says that, Romeo tries looking at Juliet. Just for a moment, he saw a twitch of a smile on her lips, but he dare not even hope. He ascribes to his imagination instead. So what's next then? asks Juliet. To be honest, I don't know. I said this because I can't keep hiding it forever. I needed to say it to you, even though I know it's impossible for me to ask you out, considering all the differences between us. Juliet pauses. Oh, of course. You don't need to say anything, though. I just need you to get it out of my system. That's all I wanted to say. Well, okay, then. I have something else to do. You don't have any more to say right now? Yeah, I mean, no, I mean, that's all. Juliet nods and says goodbye, then quickly walks away. After Juliet leaves, Romeo lets out a heavy sigh. Good work there. That's one hell of an old... lot of old baggage I just let go, and a hell of a lot of new baggage I just replaced it with. Here's an interesting fact about our Romeo. During the whole conversation, he hadn't been able to keep himself from shaking. It's an old habit that he just can't let go of. To his relief, they'd been sitting during the whole conversation, so he could hide his tremor. Still, even though he feels intense relief after telling Juliet about his feelings, his hands are still trembling. He has to wait a couple of minutes before he can walk away. So, now after Romeo's long-awaited but ultimately useless confession, what's next for our Juliet and her Romeo? Funnily enough, neither she nor Romeo ever mention it again, at least not to each other. Romeo did eventually tell some of his friends about his feelings for Juliet, but what about Juliet? Romeo didn't know anything about how she was coping with this re revelation. He expected she probably told some of her friends, but he, as he had told his, that doesn't even matter, he tells himself. We're not meant for each other anyway. Watching from the outside, nothing seems to change between them. They still talk about their classes, about their friends, about shows they've watched and books they've read, but they never ever mention again the time when Romeo revealed his feelings to Juliet. At first Romeo had thought that confessing his feelings would mean letting go of a big boulder inside his heart. 
As it turned out, it only transformed the boulder into a restless rock monster asking for more. Eventually he realises, letting Juliet know about his feelings isn't enough. He needs to have her, he wants to hold her tight, he wants to stare into her eyes and tell her he loves her to Pluto and back. He wants to hear her say, I love you too. He wants to kiss her, he wants to run away with her to a place where no one cares about their differences and just sees them as a cute couple in love. He wants to do all the good things in life together with her and more than anything on this earth, he simply wants her. The feeling is killing him. How could she be acting normally after that revelation? Does it mean his feelings mean nothing to her at all? The peak of his emotions comes one day when our hero is falling asleep. Suddenly his body is drenched in sweat, his heart beats too fast and his thoughts only run to one thing. Juliet. He wants. No, nothing prosaic. He needs Juliet. He doesn't care about anything else, about traditions, about their family, about anything. There's only one thing he needs to do tomorrow, and that is to confess his feelings again to Juliet. This time, however, he's going to ask her out. If she feels the same way, he will ask her just to give it a try and fight the world together. He resolves that he is going to take a leap of faith, and it will be the first thing he does the next time they meet. <gasps> da da da! To be continued! Cool. Right, uh, I need to change the music, that's irritating me. That's better. Um. So, oh, hi Paul. And yeah, I realised Leaky was just going to make tea, obviously. And not going out. But yes, we, we we have cupboards full of tea and kettles. We don't need to go anywhere. <laughs> um, all right, let's carry on with the story. That was a very long uh, newspaper story there. Welcome. Good evening, Mr. Baileys. Evening. Am I the first customer tonight? You are. That's new. Freya's not here? She says she's coming later tonight. Got something to do with meeting some fellow writer friends. Why not do it here? It's her favourite place, Roy. Her friends have visited this place from time to time. Just not as much as her. Roy's gathering her. I wonder what writers talk about when they're hanging out. I've known them for some years now. She has this habit, you know. If she said they're friends, it means they're just hanging out normally. But she said they were writer friends. They're probably talking about work. Either giving each other feedback on the latest drafts, or sharing and validating ideas. Interesting. They even use code words for meeting up. Oh, it's not like that. She doesn't realise that's what she says. I just picked up on it. That's even more interesting. Are you always so observant? That's part of the job. Why is that? People come here every day. Some of them aren't as talkative as others. But their body language can be loud and clear. Okay, I wonder if there's a date. October 2nd. I can tell you a lot of things. Whether they need a friendly ear, or just want to be alone. It applies to what they're ordering as well. Because, you know, sometimes what people want is not what they need. That's deeper than I would have thought. So, what are you reading from me now? I won't say. Why? That would break the charm. Ha <laughs> ha! The hell was that? I guess I can say this much. Whatever I say or do to our customers, it's always related to what I'm getting from their body language. Including our interaction now. Including our interaction now. Man, now I see why you didn't want to share. And that was enough to make me feel like I'm naked in front of you. <laughs> By the way, I haven't ordered anything. What are you having tonight? Hot chocolate. With ginger and cinnamon. I heard that's a good drink for a bit of art. Hot chocolate with ginger and cinnamon. Bit of heart. Serve it. 
There you go. Mm. You're a pretty romantic person, huh? Spend your extra time decorating this drink. Only for special people and special drinks. Say, Joe, tell me about yourself. What do you want to know? Anything. Okay, so we made a new drink. Bit of heart. And... Baileys! Favourite things! Been punk, been listening to pumpkin spice since I was a wee lad. What I'm doing with my life, escaping bloodlines, experiencing life one colour at a time. One day I'll have my own solo exhibition. Oh, I'm so close to having... On everyone. Anything? How old are you? Old enough to open a coffee shop. <laughs> oh man. I guess I should say sorry for asking that. It's alright, but that's the only answer I can give. Now you're making me wonder. What should I ask next? Oh wow, she looks beat. Hello everyone! Both looking at me like that? Freya, you look horrible. No, I don't. Yeah, you do. No, I don't. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to echo our dear barista. Yeah, you do. What happened? You better be asking what didn't happen. Because the answer would be proper sleep. And decent progress on my draft. I need to rest. Is my deadline? I don't know. Sorry, Baileys. I won't be able to keep you company. Because I have to finish this thing. And for that, I need a whole hell of a lot of espresso. I don't want to give her any espresso. That looks dangerous. way in hell I'm giving her espresso. That looks perfect. Here you go. What the hell, dude? This isn't even coffee. Drink. But this isn't one. Drink. Okay. It's on the house. I saw it when I was making the, um, when I was doing the, um, what's it called? I was doing the, 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 the uh, speed run, not the speed run, what were they called? Um, oh, it doesn't even tell you what it was. It was like the free run. Endless, thank you. God, my brain. Um, I saw that one come up because I'd made something and I was like, oh, that might be useful. And then when he was talking about hidden meanings and reading body language and she looks like she's about to 
murder someone. I was like, I need to remember. So I made myself a note. How was the meeting? It was pretty good. I got a lot of good advice. But that also means things. And not a small number of them, mind you. I need to be rewritten. Oh, you had to do a glance at the walkthrough when you published it, so you remember the name. Cool, fair enough. Oh. Oh. It's not that bad. Rewriting is part of the process. It's just that... It's just... I'm going to go to my usual corner. Although, thanks to your drink, I'm not sure whether I'll be able to stay awake or not. She looks horrible. She does. But don't worry about her. She'll finish it. This isn't the first time she's acted like this. No. But this time the stakes are pretty high. Mm. So, what brings you here today? I'm not even sure myself. I had no plan for tonight. And this place just came to mind. Out of the blue. I'd have to thank your subconscious then. I guess you should. Not sure whether I should thank it or not though. Hi Laura. Hi Baileys. How uh, how uh, you first no no you first I was just gonna ask, how are you doing? I'm fine, thanks. How about you? I'm good, yeah. I think I need to order something first. Oh, of course, of course. Go ahead. Hi, Joe. What are you having this evening, Miss Lua? Gingerbread coffee, please. Ooh, gingerbread coffee. Do I have that? I have ginger latte. Is that the same? escalated uncontrollably. Why is that? I assume both of us were just tired, knowing what we're fighting against centuries of tradition. We haven't really fought since our last fight. 
leaving things unresolved is not a good idea. But I can't bring myself to start the conversation. Why? Even I'm not sure about that. Pride, maybe? Or tiredness? Or knowing that chances are we won't be able to find the best solution for everyone anyway? Really? I have a question. Go ahead. What do you think she's feeling right now? To be honest, I don't know. She's not like me, that's for sure. Thankfully. Why? At least it won't affect her professional life that much. I'm glad I'm a freelancer. It means I can just take a break from work without so many problems. I'm not as professional as her, you see. I think you're wrong. Really? If I were her, I'd find it difficult to live life as usual. But I put on a lot of masks, just to hide the feelings I was going through. That sounds diff difficult and uncomfortable. It is. But a friend told me once, you gotta do what you gotta do. He must be a pretty cool guy. He is? Just kiss and make up! What's next for us, Baileys? I don't know, Lua. I... I met some new people this week. Including that supermodel. You knew? A girl in the corner told me. Yeah, including that supermodel. And how does that make you feel? Like a fool. What? He said a lot of things I've been trying to avoid thinking about. Lots of truths. A bit like you, you know. Attitude-wise. Get along with him. Doubt it. Opposites attract, but similarity breeds contempt. I've heard that before. A lot. I'm a certain hipster, Elle. And after listening to that guy, what's your stance on, uh, you know, us? I'm not sure, babies. What about you, yourself? Had any similar experiences this week? I have, in fact. You met a vampire, and I met a werewolf. <laughs> what are the odds? And what are the odds indeed? And what did your werewolf say? Not much, to be honest. But he made a good point about the importance of family. Baileys. I know I've been stubborn about you wanting to make peace with your family. And I know why that's very important for you. Freya said something that kind of hit hard. What was it? I was just using you as an excuse to escape your family. But I actually want to do that anyway. For myself. You know me, Baileys. I do. You know how I feel uncomfortable with people leaving their family. Which makes me an asshole, I guess. I get why you think that way, Laura. Blood is thicker than water. What should we do? Laura. Yes, babies. Please let me leave my family. I'll try to get your family to accept me. That sounds like the easier thing to do, after all. But you'll lose your immortality. You'll be an outcast amongst other realms. An outcast from a bunch of overly pretentious people. Sounds great. You live a long time. But you won't have the perfect health and perfect life as the elf and privilege. But it's not a perfect life without you. What if our relationship doesn't last? If I've lost everything, you blame me. Leo, I will never blame you for anything. If we're talking about who I used to be, that guy would have never blamed himself. Good reasons for why something failed, but never anything to do with him. But that won't happen with us. You know why? Because I've learned so many things by being with you for ten years. It's made me a better person. So you don't need to worry about any of that. Because right now, you're the most important part of my life. I don't need an immortal life. Because without you, it won't be a life worth living. Babies. I... Life. Love hurts. Really? I feel like we're living in a soap opera. It seems so. So what's our plan? Tomorrow's Saturday. Are we going on a date? I'm going to my parents' place. Oh. And I want you to come with me. What? That's so sudden. Did you already 
your plans for tomorrow? Well, it's just I'm not prepared to meet them. You'll be fine. You don't want to tell them about this first. It'll be alright. Well, they'll never forbid you from dating other races. They're not big fans of elves, that much is true. But you can prove them wrong. Okay, this could be a good first step. It is. It's at them. I don't know what will happen tomorrow. But we can think about it. And anything else? Later. I'm with you on that. So, does that mean you don't mind me? I have my doubts. But now I'm sure. I can trust you. No, uh, thank you. Are you still staying at Fran's house? Yeah. Are you staying with me tonight? Huh? What about your roommate? She's away for the weekend. We're taking a long weekend getaway until Sunday night. Ooh. Fate is on our side, it seems. Hey, Joe. Yes. We're leaving. Thank you so much for keeping up with us this past week. The pleasure was mine. We're off then. See you. Thank you for coming. Aww. <laughs> Oh, Heidi's playing Overcooked. I'm gonna strangle my upstairs neighbours or downstairs neighbours. Because they're being noisy. It's like there's a freaking par pan pandemic apocalypse going on. Be less noisy. That was pretty intense. Oh, you're back in the real world. I just pretend not to notice. They're like, one of the main reasons why I'm writing the story. To help see their struggle through to the end. It's important for the writing, you know. That's cold. What? It's not like that. It's just that... That... Yeah, that was cold. <laughs> I'm sorry. You look better than before, though. For now. I can't tell you how I feel until it's done. And I don't. Who the hell just walked in? Oh, bloody hell. We've got a Goron werewolf. I thought we helped him with his full moon tea thing. It's roaring for me because my throat can't take that. Whoa! Freya, get over here! This wolf? Is that him? I think so. Welcome, sir. Are you crazy? You can't treat a werewolf in a fury like a normal customer. Trust me, he must have his reasons for coming here. Relaxer. Do you need anything? Something to calm you down, maybe? Alright, I need to make... The drink. Oh my god! Alright. Let me find it. It was... What was his name? Galahad. I made notes from last time. There we are. Because I didn't know when I would do it next. Here's your... Whoa! Galahad a fit! One drink to rule him! Survived. Thankfully, yes. But I think I need to close up shop early. Don't 
don't want to cause any more ruckus. I need to clean up some of the mess anyway. Good idea. Can you get back all right by yourself? I'll manage. Take care on your way back. You be careful too. See you tomorrow. See you. See you. Oh god. Voices. That was interesting, so... Taytaric. We've made that before. Saturday, October 3rd, 2020. Just after the apocalypse. People can gather in social places again. The evening whispers, free of charge. Saturday, October 3rd, 2020. Wordstein Company criticised for unfair depictions of werewolf in their latest box office hit. Couchella 2020 Do's and Don'ts. Atlantic Ambassador in talks with FIRE regarding immigration. Smiler's first birthday. Okay. Cool. I think. Yeah, we've got all of Gowers. Favourite things food. Anything warm and made with ginger. Music. Metal Maiden. Books, full metal jar head, what I'm doing with my life, trying to heal myself by helping other people here. So we've got Freya, Georgie, Gala, Lua, Baileys, Hyde, Myrtle, we need one more for Rachel, but Neil, Aqua, Hendry, so just Rachel. And then we'll have 100% on all the social medias, unless there's someone new, but I think it'd be weird after that. Welcome. Hey, Joe. Good evening, Freya. You look very cheerful today. It's all thanks to you. What did I do? Hey, I finally got a good night's sleep last night. Like, I slept like a log. For about 12 hours of closing my eyes and not thinking about anything. Good for you. You really needed that. I know. I had the deadline coming. I've been pushing myself to finish this draft. A bit too much, I guess. So how's it going now? You won't believe this. I probably will. But when I woke up this afternoon, the words just flowed through me like water. I'm not force crap like I've been writing recently. And that's why taking a break is important. Yeah, yeah. You don't need to start lecturing me now. So what's your plan now? Now, as in right this moment? I'm planning to go to the bathroom and wash my face. And after that, I'll continue writing. Sounds like a solid plan. You know where the restroom is. <sighs> okay, I need something to drink now. Freya, you're unemployed. Don't waste your money on coffee shop drinks. That is so weird. Coming from the coffee shop owner. I know. You've been a regular for years. You only need the vibes of the place. Just right here. Oh, I can't do that. Any customers tonight? What would I do if this place went bankrupt? It won't happen. How can you be so sure? Just take this tap water and go do your work, okay? But... See, I've got customers. See? Yeah, there's a customer right now. So, don't you worry about me. Oh my god, all the plasters, you poor guy. Oh! Hi, Gala. What's wrong? I know you're a man of few words, but this is maybe pushing it a bit. Freya? Joe? I'm truly very sorry for what happened yesterday. Gala? Hey, it's alright. No one got hurt, right? And the coffee shop's fine. Don't think about it too much, Gala. Like Freya said, no casualties and no problems with the coffee shop. I still need to redeem myself for the mess I made and the scare I gave you. I'm sure there's something I can do. Hmm. Why don't you buy something for the lady here? I'm sure she'll appreciate it. Hey, what do you mean? Do you want anything to drink, Freya? No, it's alright, Ghana. I insist. You don't have to. Please accept it. At least it'll help me stop feeling so guilty, at least. A little. Alright, alright. I wouldn't mind a coffee. Not an espresso, mind you. Something with a little less of a kick. You know how to make sugar and spice? The one with cinnamon? Yeah. A cup of sugar and spice, please. Okay. So, do I have 
that one in my recipe. Sugar and spices for the lady with the vices. Hey! Oh well, I won't complain. Thank you, Gala. Don't mention it. Joy, are you sure there's nothing I can do for you? You don't have to do anything, Gala. It's fine. But to be honest, I'm curious. What happened yesterday? Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, you usually stay indoors during the full moon, don't you? I usually do. But there was an emergency at the hospital yesterday. What kind of emergency? Hmm. The hospital was really packed yesterday. After that announcement. Announcement? One saying that a replacement government issued fury sensitive will be available soon. Already seen that news on the day of the full moon was just stupid. So many restless werewolves came. Asking about the sedative. Which isn't ready yet. The announcement said it wasn't ready. Just that it was coming soon. You think people read the whole article? You only saw the headline or glanced at the news store? And they went straight to the hospital? I don't blame them though. Finding out the only publicly available sedative is dangerous. It's difficult for some people. I ended up having to explain it to dozens of werewolves. I even had to put up some broke werewolves in the isolation rooms. Was that bad, huh? Yeah, to the point where they ran out of rooms to put me. That's why at the end of my shift I left immediately. Normally I'd have asked a friend to lock me in one of our isolation rooms, of course. But I couldn't, so I rushed right back to my apartment. But it was too late. Thankfully I was in this area, and I managed to force myself to come to your place. God, excuse me for asking this. Yes. But you didn't hurt anyone on the way here, right? As far as I remember, no. I didn't see any blood on my clothes. That's good to hear. This might sound overly confident, considering what happened yesterday, but I have enough control to make sure I don't hurt anyone. As long as I have something to direct my fury towards. Usually, I end up destroying stuff around me. Or, worst case, I do myself. <laughs> Despite all of that, I'm still glad that no one got hurt. You're always looking for the positive side, aren't you? Just doing my job. Thanks, both of you. I really mean it. Please, if there's anything I can do to pay, I mean, if there's anything I can do to help, please don't hesitate to ask me right away. Will do. In the meantime, can I order the drink? Sure, what are you having? Same as yesterday. Okay, which was a gal I had, which I'm still going to have to look at because... Tea, milk, ginger. Special brew. Thank you. The drink that saved me. Once again, thank you. How can we find this drink? By the way, Gala. Do I think you could be 100% sure that that drink is your natural sedative? Why don't you put some in a bottle and carry it with you everywhere? That's the plan. It has to be warm, though. I can use a vacuum flask, I suppose. I'll give it a try next full moon. Don't worry, Freya. I'm going to stay at my place for the next full moon. I'm not taking any risks. Before I can make sure how effective that remedy is. Phew! What the? Oh, Rachel! What's going on? 
what else? Your father. Of course. What the hell was he thinking? Coming backstage at Coachella. Just to get in an argument with my manager. Huh? Before we continue. Joe, a cafe latte please. I'm sure I have that in my brew pan. Coffee milk milk. Draw on it. I haven't drew on one for a while. Yes, latte art. Okay, so Dragon. I'm not drawing and redacted. Thanks. How did he manage to get backstage? He told security as my father. And he messaged me about coming beforehand. Said he was just gonna wish me luck. So I told him to let him in, of course. He's still my father. Things were noisy at first. Then my manager came and Ugh. I don't know why he hates him so much. It's showbiz. I'm mature enough to know what's good or bad for me. What happened after that? Mr. Lester told the security guards to kick him out. He's still allowed in the festival area. I saw him in the crowds. Did the concert go well at least? Oh yeah. <laughs> Other than the arguments backstage. Everything was great. Who's the first one to play in the main stage? Usually no one pays much attention to us on first. But there were thousands of people in the audience during my session. Nice. So you don't need to be at the event anymore after this? Not really. I did my stage time. And then there was this press conference after my show. After show press conference? Yeah, the pre-show was done yesterday. Today was a small one. There was almost a dozen journalists who wanted to interview me. So we decided to just do a mini conference. Good for you. I'm totally back in the game, huh? I guess I am. Thanks to Mr. Lester. I would say it's because of you. But your manager's probably worked up some of his influence so, too. <laughs> so why are you here? Ugh. Because of Dad, of course. I told him to come here this evening. We really need to set things straight. I need to stop messing with my manager so much. Because this evening is the only time we can meet. I can't go to the party Mr. Lester is hosting. What party? He's hosting a party for the VIPs and artists he manages. The club in Belltown. Is it okay for you to go to a party without a guardian? I'm 18, remember? I'm adult! Yeah, but you can only enter some clubs if you're 21. Not this time. Because Mr. Les is my manager and it's his party. Hmm. Not sure about that. It's true. No, I know you can do that by using his name. But I don't think we should do that with you. Why? I'm an adult. No, you aren't, Rachel. Have you ever been to one of Lester's parties? Well, no. You have? Not personally. I've heard stories. Stories? But he knows how to party. That's good then. Mm, that's not necessarily a good thing. Knowing how to party might mean something else entirely. Er. I don't know what you're talking about. You'll find out. Especially if you keep Lester on as your manager. Personally, I don't mind wild parties. But inviting an underage part person to this party might be a bit too far. Well, huh? <gasps> what the hell? Oh no. Dad! What? Rachel, is that Mr. Hendry? Yes! Dad! What happened? Joe, can you get a cup of milk for him, please? Just milk? Just milk. Are you 
making latte redacted? Leaky, is that what the thing is? Here. Oh, his little moustache. Thank you. Dad, please hold on. Can someone help me call an ambulance, please? They're on the way. I've contacted the hospital. Thank you. I've also contacted our Nekomimia expert personally. She's off shift right now. She's also on the way. Oh, okay. Favourite things, love my family, cats, milk and you, what I'm doing with my life. I've been dancing, singing, tried to achieve my dreams since I was 13. I'm not stopping now. I feel like I should have an achievement. I've unlocked everyone. momentarily.
Ah, I'm back. Sounds like upstairs is having a party, which is just a great way to, you know, do social distancing. Um, Spice Lady. Sunday, October 4th, 2020. It feels like we're rounding up the story. Evening whispers. Fight broke out during Coachella, culprits in police custody. Despite the arrest, Coachella will go on. Police raid on private Coachella after party is biggest drug and sex related bust of the year. Blimey. Oh yeah, I think we've had a couple of stories. Damn it, we missed part two. Right, okay. Happily ever after ever after ever after part two. It doesn't happen the next time Romeo and Juliet meet. When Romeo sees her, he knows something isn't right. After that, each time he sees her, he feels uncomfortable, almost afraid. Our hero isn't scared of much, but he can't explain how she makes him feel. As though she's surrounded by... a fierce, powerful aura that keeps him from approaching. It takes a few days for whatever it is to fade, when that sense of danger finally eases up. Romeo finds he had the courage to approach her. Cunningly, he waits until the end of a night class when both of them are ready to go home. Hey Jules, are you heading back? Let me drive you home. Nah, it's fine, I'll just call an Uber. Um, I have something I need to tell you though. Her expression quickly changes to one Romeo's never seen before. An uncomfortable looking mixture between happy, sad and angry. He finds out he doesn't know what to call it. She pairs it in. What's it about? It's about, you know, the thing I told you a few months ago. The slight smile he saw when he first confessed his feelings returns to her face. Okay, let's go for a drive. I know a good place to talk. Juliet directs Romeo sporadically and they chat normally to fill the intervening time until they reach what re she reveals to be their destination. Ooh, I need to put my laptop to sleep. A large, dark, empty park. Hmm, I didn't know there was a park around here. You know nothing, Romeo. Hey, what? You don't s you said you don't read or watch Game of Thrones. She side highs him. It's all over the internet, my dude. Good point, well made. Our heroes climb over the locked gate and meander slowly across the pass. Until they find a bench. An unspoken decision has them both sit down at the same time. By this point, it's close to midnight. The drive had been long and he'd driven slower than usual to stretch out their time together. <laughs> Milo. <laughs> um, the sky is bright with stars while the full moon hangs, hangs heavily on the horizon. A warm and gentle breeze brings with it the scent of wet earth and green growing things, and far distant clouds tease them with the idea of rain before morning. It is, Romeo feels, perfect. As though God had created it especially for them in this moment. So, says Juliet, lowering her gaze from the milky splash of stars above them to meet his eyes. What did you want to talk to me about? Also, how have I got so many bloody cups on my hands? What have I been doing? Reading papers in my sleep? Weird. Romeo thinks, what the hell? And jumps right in. I told you I liked you, do you remember? Yes. It's a lie. Her eyes narrow. What do you mean? Careful, dear Romeo, you should not play with a woman's heart. I still liked you. I never stopped liking you, and every day I like you more, and I don't think I can go another day without telling you how I feel. Oh, I know. His jaw snaps shut, and he blinks rapidly. This is not what he thought she would say. What? Is it that obvious? No, but it was kind of easy to guess. Ah, okay, so yes, there's, there's that. And? You know, when I first told you how I felt, I thought it would help me clear my head. I wanted it to, but... Since then it's haunted me. Why did I want that? I think of you and I want to see you. I think of you and I want to talk to you. He continues laying bare all the things he's been thinking of these past few weeks, culminating in an impassioned plea. I know it probably won't end well, but I want to be with you. I want us to try. Juliet takes his hand and squeezes it, feels the tremble in his fingers and says nothing about it. Romeo, I like you, she begins. His heart nearly bursts. I like you a lot, but only as, not only as a friend, but you know that... With our backgrounds and our families, it's impossible for us to be together. I know that, Juliet. I know, I know. But still, I really like spending time with you. Whenever I talk to you, I feel so happy and so scared. 
Why would I feel scared? Because I don't want to say anything that will make you think less of me. I want to look perfect in front of you, even though when we're together it feels like I can only show all of my imperfections. Hey, no one's perfect. They sit quietly for a moment, still holding hands. Juliet stares, uh, Romeo, Romeo stares at the intertwined fingers while Juliet watches the breeze ripple through the trees. It still feels weird, a heroine muses almost to herself. You told me that you liked me and I thought it never could work and then you said the same and I was disappointed somehow. And now here you are telling me to forget about the rules and I'm the only one saying they're important. Ugh, tell me about it. I don't even know where all this is coming from. You don't like what I like and I don't like what you like and please don't get me started. Your favourite book in the world is the single worst thing I've ever read. Huh, you mean The Secret? Yes. Oh god, let's please not talk about it now. She tilts her head back and laughs and Romeo remembers that he used to hate that sound a long time ago. Okay, let's not talk about it, but if you know a relationship won't go well, why do you keep telling me how you feel? Why don't you just try to forget me? I've tried, he says, squeezing her sighs, squeezing her hand gently. But every conversation with you is enough to make me remember that you mean so much so much to me. You don't listen to explosions in the sky, but you want to think of whenever I do. You don't play video games as much as me, but you on my team is what I want the most whenever I play a multiplayer game. We pray to different gods, but your face is the one that appeared whenever I pray for a good future. Juliet doesn't say anything. She just looks into his eyes while listening to everything he's been keeping in his head and heart for a long time. Before this, I always thought that when I fell in love with someone, it would be a person that I wanted to grow old with. Do I want to grow old with you? No, I don't want to do that. But I do want to be with you. Here. In this moment, stuck in eternal limbo for an infinite loop of this exact hour, forever. Hell yeah, I do. Neither Romeo nor Juliet speak for some time after that. They just keep staring at each other. They don't know what it is, but they surely feel something strange, something magical is happening between them now. A delicate thing which twists in the air around them, young and oh so fragile. Do you love me? Juliet asks quietly. I'm not sure, Romeo answers. But if it's not love, then I don't know what it is. But if it's love, then why don't you want to grow old with me? Because it's just love. You're such a weirdo. I don't know why I ever fell in love with you, said Juliet. Right at that moment, Romeo feels joy in his heart. A moment of happiness sweeping through his body, destroying all the baggage that's been messing with his heart and head for so many months. But then reality hits suddenly as a joy. Everything it happens in a single moment. Instant. In one, just one moment, Romeo feels the greatest happiness and the greatest sadness he's ever felt in his life. Hey, I might not be worth sacrificing everything, especially your family, but if love is really that special, then maybe it'll give us another chance to be together. Even though, maybe it can only happen in another life when we are both cats. Says Romeo. Is that, did you just quote Vanilla Sky at me? I can't believe you did that. It's hilarious you said that. You know I hate that movie. You, it's a great movie. How the hell did I manage to fall in love with you again? Both of them start to laugh together. Vanilla Sky. Is that one of Tom Cruise? And some kind of digital memory upload or something. Um... Both of them start to laugh together, continuing until the laughter joins into simple smiles. A simple, beautiful curve on their lips shows a deeper meaning only for the two of them. I love you, says Romeo. I love you too, I guess, answers Juliet. Oh, you thought that was the rocket ship one? I don't know. Then wh which film am I thinking of? With Tom Cruise and memory uploads. of Minority Report. <laughs> Besides, that's future learning. That's not memory uploads. Oh, Tom Cruise, Cameron Diaz, Penelope Cruise and Kurt Russell. Is that Vanilla Sky then? Dan. <gasps> Joe is right. Jesse is wrong. Oh, dear. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. Hi, Milo. Um, they sit closer now while holding your hands. Juliet puts her head on Romeo's shoulder. Is it worth it? She asks. For now, right at this moment, it's totally worth it. But whether that feeling will last as time goes by, as more people find out about it, I don't know. Juliet sighs quietly. Life sucks sometimes. Life sucks most of the time. That's why I want to make this moment last forever, if that's even possible. It's possible if we believe it. Is that what that weird book taught you? Laughs Romeo. Shut up, Juliet answers and pinches his 
hand. They stay silent for a while. Hey, kiss me. The words come from Juliet. Romeo doesn't know how to react to that. Why? Yes, I've heard people say that kisses are a magical thing. It can stop time or take you to the future in an instant. Hmm, I've heard that story. I always thought it was silly though. The situation we're stuck in is pretty silly too, you know. Good point, he allows. Well made. So, so. They stare at each other as they lean and they close their eyes. When their lips touch for the first time, it's the strangest sensation either of us ever felt. Everything feels so magical. It feels as if... as if... as if time has stopped only for them. As if they're in an infinite loop at that exact moment. To be continued! Happily ever after, ever after, ever after. Part 3. <laughs> Romeo comes awake with a gasp, his mind already whirling as he tried to make sense of what ha was happening. Is it just a dream? He thinks. Please forgive him, dear readers. He's barely awake. He has no idea how or when he got home, but he's still wearing yesterday's clothes and he experiences the unwashed, uncomfortable feeling that comes with waking after falling asleep fully dressed. He remembers. Juliet! What happened to her? He ruffles through blankets and pockets until he finds his cell phone and immediately fires off a message to her. He won't admit it, will barely remember it through the haze of panic, but he spends the next 14 minutes and 10 seconds staring fixedly at it until it vibrates in his hand and drops to the... Um, and he drops it to the floor. Romeo! Juliet's voice is muffled by the carpet, but he doesn't think he's ever been so relieved to hear it. Where are you? Are you alright? I'm fine. What about you? I I'm okay. We, we need to talk. Something's definitely different. Romeo opens his mouth to agree before he even realises how he feels. He's been so weighed down by his feelings for so long that he hadn't noticed something had changed until, Romeo until Juliet brought it up. Waking up has been bad for so long, but today he feels different. Today he feels good. When Romeo arrives at the coffee shop, Juliet's already there. She waits while he orders an Americano, patiently slipping her, sipping her orange juice until he joins her. So, Romeo says as he seats himself opposite Juliet. What happened last night? Tom Cruise on a rocket ship. There was one where there was like a whole bunch of clones. And it had Samuel L. Jackson in. What's that film? Was that the one that Jesse was thinking? Was that Tom Cruise even? Oh, you were thinking of a different book? Oh, Vanilla Sky's a film though. Also, what is that film I just said with Samuel L. Jackson and a bunch of clones? There's some kind of space station on a planet and... Something in the sky, like Elysium or something like that. She shrugs, shakes her head, the picture of honest confusion. I'm not sure, but I felt kind of light when I woke up this morning. Yeah, yeah, that's a good way of describing it. I feel like a part of me is missing. Oblivion! Tom Cruise? I've seen a lot of movies, so. Though they're closing my cinema from tomorrow, which is when I had a film book to go see. Which is annoying. I mean, I saw four at the weekend, but still, I wanted to see one more. <sighs> I don't know how long they're closing it for, so... I, don't, I doubt the film will be on... Well, it depends what they do when it comes back. fiddling with these because they're all magnetic. It's quite fun. Um, yeah, she nods in agreement. They're quiet for some time. Juliet plays with the straw, the milk, paper melting quickly in the icy remnants of her drink. Do you? She trails off and tries again. Do you actually remember what happened last night? Kind of. Romeo frowns and, gr frowns and grimaces. I'm not sure though. How do you feel about me now? asks Juliet. He pauses to consider. I still like you a lot, in fact, but it's certainly a different kind of feeling to the last few months. That's exactly how I feel. He sighs explosively. What the hell happened? Juliet leans in and holds his gaze, lowers her voice. I'm not sure myself, but I have this theory. 
Maybe, and I know it sounds wild, but hear me out, just maybe, the parts of us that fell in love with each other somehow left us last night. They separated themselves from this world, making their own time, making their own, where time loops the exact moment over and over again. Romeo looks her in the eye without blinking for a long moment and bursts out laughing. You're a complete mad woman, you know that. That's just, that's just, you're not even the one that likes sci-fi and fantasy. Oh, shut it, boy. She huffs at him and crosses her arms as she leans back. No, 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 seriously. He waves a hand at her. The fact that that theory came out of your mouth is crazier than the theory itself. His li her lip twitches and then she's laughing with him and for a glorious moment the air is filled with pure and uncomplicated good humour. And the laughter winds down, they each find they can't stop grinning at each other and it's beautiful and just like it used to be. A thought occurs to Romeo and he opens his mouth and Juliet immediately points a finger at him. Shut up. He closes his mouth but keeps grinning and held up in, and hands held up in surrender. You can't say it isn't possible though. She defends herself with a right shrug. Romeo tilts his head. Nothing's impossible. So what now? What now? What? I mean, what happens to us now? He looks around and shrugs. We just live normally, I guess. It's been months, if not eons, since I could talk to you normally like this. And honestly, it feels awesome. She laughs and it's so much easier than it's been in a long time. Yeah, yeah, I know. She smiles at him. So we're good then. Better than good, I guess, answers Romeo. Good point. Juliet nods. Well made. After that, life goes on for Romeo and Juliet. They're still good friends. They both found their loves. The one who shares their interests. That doesn't force them to sacrifice too many things in life. Yet, still makes them feel like the happiest person on earth. They grow old together as good friends and not as lovers. But what about the Romeo and Juliet who burn with love for each other? Readers, I'll tell you that couple is still sitting on their bench in the park on that clear and perfect night. And they'll stay there until the end of time. They've created their own world without other people meddling, judging, forcing compromises. For the rest of eternity, they'll have each other in their pure, naive love, young love, and nothing will ever change. That. Some people say that on a clear night with the promise of a dawn rain, the Milky Way flows across the sky, and the full moon hangs low, you can see a young couple sitting on the bench in the park. But only out the corner of your eye, and only if you've room for romance in your soul. Is it true? Me. Does it matter? I reply. Surely it doesn't matter to anyone else on earth, and it certainly doesn't matter to them. That was sweet. Welcome! Hey, pup. Good evening, everyone. Everyone safe and sound tonight? So far, so good, officer. But the cop is supposed to be watching this area hanging out in the coffee shop. I'm so sure about that. Hey. I'm working right now. I just love multitasking, you know. That requires skill. Taking a break and working at the same time, you know. You know it. That's an oxymoron. That's why I said it requires skill. Anyway, Joe. I really need an espresso to keep me awake tonight. Espresso to keep our officer upright on patrol. Ooh, now I get it. Internet famous. Was I missing something for Georgie? Maybe. Either which way. Eh, you and your sense of humour. Your expressos are always out of this world. Definitely better than mine or my wife's. It's not a competition, officer. Ha, huh, it is for her. She thought if she could make a better one, I'd stop coming to this place so often. That's not happening anytime soon. Is there anything special today? Surprisingly, no. Got to make sure this place is safe, though. What are you grinning about? I mean it. You were here the last, couple, last two days, right? Yes, I was. And some crazy things happened here. And two days in a row. As if the gods were trying to give me first-hand experience. To use in my story. Still fretting over your story, eh? Well, the deadline for my draft is getting nearer. Oh, yeah. How's it going? What's it, you wise? It's shaping... Excuse me. It's shaping it pretty well. Quality-wise? Honestly. I'm pretty confident. Best of luck, then. Do you have any updates? 
about the last two days of chaos? The werewolf case? I spoke to Gala about it. What? Are you going to arrest him? Some officers of the precinct were talking about it, but in the end, we agreed not to do it, because he really helped a lot that night. We asked the folks in the hospital, and some of the other people in the area. Without him, we'd have had a lot more problems. He helped a lot, getting most of the werewolves safe in the hospital. Too bad he couldn't lock himself up in time. Thankfully, he didn't hurt anyone. So those who would rather detain him can't do anything anyway. Phew. Pretty mad at you if they did arrest him. Hey, being mad at me wouldn't solve anything. I know. What about Rachel's dad? Any idea what happened? I'm not too sure myself. Most of it didn't happen around here. What? Yeah, it seems like it happened out near Coachella. That's a long way away. I mean, it's not actually that far, but he wouldn't be able to walk here. Not in that state. So far, that's all I know. <gasps> Rachel! Rachel? Is Mr. Hendry alright? Before that, could I have a cup of hot chocolate? Dark. fast enough to stop things getting worse. He's doing okay then. Ooh, we're getting gummy endings. The Velvet family. It'll take a few days before he recovers. But no permanent injuries we need to worry about. That's good to hear. I know. But still, it's not because of me. Because I didn't listen to him. And all he wanted to do was protect me. Rachel, don't blame yourself for this. Please don't take offence. But it's okay for you to leave your father alone in the hospital. His friends are out at the moment, and I can't face being stuck in a room with a bunch of people I don't even know right now. Besides, I really need to get away from him. So I told Dad I'm going to visit Coffee Talk to get some fresh air. He's okay with that. He understands. He always does, I guess. Miss Rachel, what really happened last night? Dad got into fights with some, some plugs. He heard them talking about me. In some very suggestive, perverted ways. Oh. He didn't like that, of course. So he morphed into his cat form and started a fight with the thugs. Why did he morph? That's so people wouldn't see what his human form looked like. I'm linking directly to me. Some cops went to the crime scene. They found some eyewitnesses to testify. And they managed to find the thugs. Are they fans of yours? No. It's even worse. They work for Mr. Laster. What? Oh boy. The reason why it didn't take long for the cops to find them was because they were already under arrest because the party went too far last night. Oh! How did it all connect up? They're Mr. Lester's bodyguards. They were chilling after the show having a free party before the real one. And you know how about guys and locker room talk, yeah? Yeah. Well, that's what they were doing. And I was the topic of discussion. Ugh! So, this that. I'm sorry to hear that. I knew were right about his party. I'm glad I wasn't there. Once again, I owe Dad for it. It's okay. The most important thing right now is you're safe. And you're dead when you're through. I should listen to him. He might be out of touch. But he's still way more experienced than me. And he's my father. I wish Mum was here. She'd know what to do. She'd know what to say to Dad when he's recovered. You know what? I'm sure you'll know what to do. You're an adult, remember? But I don't know. All I know is I have to be there for him. That's it. That's all you have to do. It may be weird to hear about something coming from Freya, but she is right. Neither when he needs you, Rachel. And whenever you need a breath of fresh air, you can come here and relax for a while. Guys, thank you. I've had enough, enough fresh air for one day. I'll go back to hospital now. Thank you for the update, Miss Rachel. I wish your father a speedy recovery. Thank you, Jerry. So let's have a quick look how we're doing. So all achievements, coffee and chill, nice. All gallery, unlock all special drinks, 
Spent a total of an hour making latte art. Played story mode to conclusion. Trash drinks. And then I'm guessing those three are uh, people related. Man. It's a weekend. Pretty crazy, I know. Anyway, I've got to continue my patrol. It's been a pretty weird weekend. But overall, things are still safe around here. Weave with that. Never let your guard down, okay? No problem, officer. Thank you for checking up on us, Officer Georgie. Okay then, see you. How are we looking? Are you going to leave as well for a... I don't think so. I've had enough rest. I have stories to write. You're not tired? Definitely not. In fact, I think I can get it done today. Hmm, alright. I won't bother you then. Oh, you're never a bother. Besides, this whole book project would never have existed without this place. And you. So thank you. The pleasure was mine. Now I'm sure you shouldn't spend any more time on chit chat. Got a book to finish. Heh. <laughs> no problem, boss. Yeah, the discarding and the latte art, I can probably replay a day and do that. Um and unlocking all the drinks I'm going to have to probably do and maybe replay some days, I don't know. Two weeks later! Yeah, we're definitely near the end of this. Evening Whispers. Sunday, October 18th, 2020. Coachella Festival pr proves to be a major boost for Seattle tourism. More women have spoken out and claim Morris Lester lied. Initial reports indicate possible herpes outbreak at Coachella. Ew. Ha! Huh. Hello! You're finally here. Hello. Hi, yo. Hi, friend. Huh? Someone's feeling happy today? Of course. Did they? They approved it. We're so happy for you. Congrats! Judging from your expression, I'd say somewhere between ecstatically and rapturously. You're goddamn right. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god! What did they react to the draft? Surprisingly, they liked it. That's amazing. I know, right? I couldn't believe it either. They told me if the book sells well, they'll definitely sign me for a second book. I'm so happy for you. Anyway, whatever happens with the book now, I can take things a little slower because they gave me a year to finish it with a feedback session every month. Sounds professional enough? Of course, they are the biggest publisher around. Enough about me. How's the coffee shop been doing? It's been great. We've had a lot of new customers lately and some old timers, of course. I heard Hyde's back from his trip to Korea. Yeah, he brought us some gifts back. He didn't get any for me? I'm not sure, but he did say he always gives gifts directly. Gift giving the old fashioned way, huh? How about you? Things are great. Last time I saw you was before your mini break. Yeah, and we decided to go to Coachella. Wow! That event was a mess. <laughs> yes, three hours at the festival, wishing I fresh. So, where did you go after that? We ended up in Port Townsend. How was it? I enjoyed it. Never knew a historical trip could be fun. Oh yeah, I saw your new profile picture, Aqua. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Her out for a bit with a booth. 
Thank you. You don't have to keep thanking me. By the way, have any of you heard from Neil? No. Or me? They did send two postcards to the coffee shop. Really? Yeah, one's from Coachella. That's not even that far away. Why send a postcard? Hard to tell with them. What about the second one? It's from New York. What? What are they doing in New York? Beats me. Working on their mission, maybe. Huh, yeah, probably. It's some more of a chance there. Anyway, Shikaj, we're leaving for the night. Oh, come on. So soon? We were here for hours before you arrived. We need to work tomorrow. Fair enough. Take care on your way, then. Good luck with the novel. Thanks. See you, Joe. See you around. someone you can be comfortable with. Such a short amount of time. Yeah, anyway. Sorry if it seems like ignoring you, Bailey's. No worries. I don't feel ignored at all. Are you by yourself tonight? No, I'm waiting for Lua. She has some work to do. This late at night? Yeah. She's been doing overtime for the past few days. How are the two of you doing? Things have been great. In fact, after ten years together, we're finally moving in together next month. Wow, congrats! But I thought Lua lived with her flatmate. Want to move into a new place? She got promoted recently. Ah, <sighs> And her company's providing her with an apartment. Wow, she must be a really big deal in her office. Well, she definitely earns more than me. That's not saying much, Bailey's. Ha! <laughs> you shouldn't say that to a fellow freelancer. Oh, here she comes. Bailey's, I'm so sorry. I didn't expect it to take so long. I thought it would be done by... Honey, it's alright. Freya and Joe have been keeping me company anyway. Oh hey Freya! And Joe. Sorry for barging you without saying hi. How's it going? I would say things are great. But not as great as you two lovebirds. <laughs> you told her already? Only about the moving in part. Ah, as you've heard. We're going to be moving in together next month. Where is it? Not far. I mean, the company provided the place, so they want to cut my commuting costs as much as possible. That's thoughtful of them. It means I don't need to reimburse my taxi fees when I'm working overtime. Oh yeah, that too. It also means we get to visit this place more often. That's a good point. We owe this coffee shop a lot anyway. Don't mention it. I have a question for both of you. Go on. The last time we met, I believe you were going to introduce babies to your parents. How did it go? Man, her father didn't kill me at least. Well, at least Papa let you eat lunch with us. That's rare, you know. I know. And at least I didn't say no. Which means a lot, I guess. It's a good start. It's definitely a good start. Anyway, babies, we need to go now. Or I'll miss the intro again. We thought it was going somewhere. Yeah, we're going to watch the midnight screening of Full Mental Conflict. I didn't take you for someone who likes FMC, though. I don't, but this guy loves it. Hey, William. You always enjoyed watching me play the game. I enjoyed watching you, not the game. Too bad I didn't introduce you to Myrtle just now, baby. She worked on the game. Really? Oh well, I'll be visiting this place more often. I'll probably meet her again, one of these days. You probably will. Now go, you lovebirds. You don't want to miss the movie. Alright, catch up with you later, Freya. Bye, Joe. Enjoy the movie. There they go. So happy for them. They've still got a long way to go. Probably a lot of obstacles in their path. They're moving forward. Yes. How will you write the story? As it is. It's beautiful enough. It has enough drama. Ha! <laughs> That's one way to put it. Anyway. What's that look for? You haven't told me any of our other friends here. How are they doing? You only skipped coming for ten days. What do you expect? Come on, they played an important part in my writing process, remember? Well, there are some updates about the regulars. Tell me, tell me! Where should we start? The 
whoever visits this place more often now that they live nearby. The last time they came, they were talking about catering and venues. Hyde returned from his trip to Korea and brought gifts, some more special than others. <laughs> he said he's considering moving back to Seattle if his agency allows it. Aqua continues her work with the university. She's still working on small indie games. The difference is she's not alone now. Neil. Any news about their superhero breeding mission are the two postcards they sent me. Rachel is back at the recording studio preparing for her first solo album. She found a new manager, someone who made the news as a legend coming back to the industry. Her dad. And finally Freya. She finished her book, got published and has some signing sessions. It's a massive success, sold out even after the fourth printing, so it might be adapted to a movie. She's working on a second novel. Oh, hang on. I got like four achievements. They just didn't pop up. So I got... Oh no, I got Art Connoisseur. Which didn't pop up. my phone and occasionally they pop up on my PC. Though they're probably popping up on the TV that's not on the channel right now. Because um Yeah, so Art Connoisseur is I'm assuming the gallery is locked, unlocked. But I didn't get Well yet I didn't get I don't know what the daily count is. Served the most drinks. I've got the most correct orders, I guess. I would have expect to have gotten. Playing the story to its conclusion. Let's just leave the. Um, up for now. I should get that. Let me get TA up and see if I can figure out what I missed. Greedy people are <laughs> hoarding bleep bloops. It could be. Or maybe it's not quite finished. It's probably because it's not quite finished. There we go. Bleep bloop. There's a spark. More than friends. Welcome. Hello, Joe. Good evening, sir. Um, have we met before? I'm sure this is your first time here. Of course I've been here. In fact, I've worked here before. What? Wait! No way! Is that really you? It's been a while. You've changed. A bit too much. I've learned a lot about how to live with your people since then. I assume it was a success then? Multiple successes. What's with the new look then? Just trying to blend in. It seems like an earthling immigration agency is after me. Now that you mention it, someone did visit this place looking for you. When was it? Not so long after your second visit here. Was he a bald guy in a suit? Yes, that F-R-I, F-I-R-E agent. You've seen him? Yes, thankfully I've changed my appearance since then. By the way, you can drop the act in front of me. So you finally noticed. To think that such power can be born from our kind. You're good with your act, though. It took a few tries, but there are some timelines where I... Or I forget to pretend that I don't have 
some knowledge of certain stuff. Heh, interesting. Now I'm curious to know about those mistakes. Well, it happened a few times. First, when Freya told me about her meeting in the elevator. Then it was the first time Rachel visited this place. And the last one involved you on your second visit. Hmm? Oh, and there was another one right after Freya got her draft approved. Can you show it to me? Assuming you know how I communicate with my kind. Never tried it, but let's see. Ooh, interstellar support. Extraterrestrial intern. So we've done the main story, but we haven't seen everything yet. And we also got... Is that it? Is this canon? So apparently we're an alien. Or the child of an alien. <sighs> Aww. That's the best one. Oh no, that's the best one. So that was Neil, who was a doctor. Oh, Ginger and handcuffs. <laughs> they are all the best ones, yes. Was it drinks I mucked up on? So if I do a perfect, perfect run, do I get a different story? Don't know now. I have to do some research. I don't... I mean, there's choices. The choices sort of are you make the right drink or you make the wrong drink. So I'd be curious to see what happens if you just basically serve everyone except Freya espresso and give Freya, you know, like, hot chocolate every time or whatever. It's gone through a lot of iterations by the looks of it. Oh, and that's back to the beginning. So... Coffee and chill, unlock all special drinks, and trash. I missed a secret! Okay, so if I do change barista... So, I mean, the game progress is not... That could be the number of special drinks, I suppose. Hmm. I'm going to have a quick look. Because I basically finished a playthrough so we can have a look at the guide now or at least have a look at what TA says and I'm going to sit up because I'm slowly getting shorter and shorter in the window <laughs> Keep on. I've got a bandage on my thumb because it's split I keep on trying to use my thumb to do stuff and it's not working not one okay where's the other secret uh, find the secret behind the barista Oh, you need to replay. Right, so this is... How 
do I replay? Because they were telling me about mistakes I made. talking about dates and uh, the, the dates in the guide. Sorry, I'm just looking at the guide for the dates. So we're going to do this because it's not like we've got to get up early to commute to work. We've still got at least an hour. Okay, Tuesday, September 2nd, 22nd. We already served her the bedchamber instead of the expresso. Welcome. Oh, it's you. Okay, so is there an option to... dialogue or something. I screw up about knowing stuff, I think.
I'll leave it on the latte art screen and then Oh, you don't mock my latte art. Right, is this what you call latte art? That's cute. Perfect. Okay, I must I must have given him the wrong drink the first time. I might have given him chocolate. <laughs> That's why it wasn't skippable. Okay. We're just gonna find out what the big secret is. Spoilers. Green tea latte. Oh, I don't mean to trash it. Just trying to draw on it. Trying to make a heart, it's really hard to do the heart. So we get new dialogue. Do the skippy thing. We can't skip it, it's new.
I agree with Officer Georgie. We don't need to make a snap decision. I'm sure you and Miss Hendry will find some common ground together. Why are you all looking at me like that? How do you know my father's name? Oh, yes. Well, because we've played it before, so... Ah. Uh, visited this place before? I can't say anything about that. You were just about to say something, weren't you, Officer Georgie, right? Well, I was. Just to talk more about your problems. There we go. That's our second bit when we screwed up. And then the next one is the 29th. makes you thirsty and an alien. <laughs> okay, how does this game make you an alien? Is it like, Leaky, you're an alien. <sighs> you should have made tea in my tea break. Latte art on your about the name we use on Earth. Again? Um, it's just that, you know, you kind of remind me of our first man on the moon. Oh, really? We have chosen the right name, then. Because that was where our name came from. This has happened three times now. You really are hiding something, huh? What are you talking about? Oh, well. Alright. Please surprise us. I don't know, it's like milk, honey 
Indian lemon or something? It was like out of space or something like that. I'll just load days and serve like different drinks and trash them and do latte art. Before you ask, that's how they drink. about what is going on. Of course it's a lot easier to do these when you're just basically skipping everything. <laughs> this game would just go really quickly if you skipped everything. But then you wouldn't have the story! Why would you want to do that? should be secret achievement. Two weeks later. Oh, we didn't check for stories. Right. Firstly, stories. Ah, thank you. Your fiction-free plan trial is over. Did you enjoy the content we provided for you? Do subscribe to our fiction plan for only $5 a month or join our premium subscription plan for only $10 a month with access to all of our content. With your subscription, you can help support high-quality, unbiased journalism, as well as giving young fiction writers an appreciative audience. Cool. We completed our social profile, and we've got many drinks left undiscovered. But we'll fill those in. this game. I've really enjoyed this game. It's really good. I'm glad I get to finish it. Um, of course, I finish games, I've got to think of new ones to start. And at some point I do have to go back to control because I... I, I by the way, I haven't seen your final draft. May I read it? Sure. I brought an extra copy. Let's see. character is a time traveller? Certainly. I mention it just enough to raise suspicion. Where did you get the inspiration for the character? You know the answer. Why would I? Either you're smart enough to get what I mean, or you already know what my answer is. Gulp. Don't think about it too much, it's only a story. Anyway. What's that look for? You haven't told me any of our other f about any of our other friends here. Okay. Right. Okay. So we're a time traveler, not an alien, but or maybe we're a time traveling alien.
So she found out, huh? Clever, as usual. In some timelines, yes. God of caffeine! Every drink's need to God! Oh God, I would love to time travel and fix some stuff, but yeah. In some timelines, yeah. But I have to ask you this. Why? Why what? Why do all this? Opening the cafe. Connecting people. I just like to make things sure things go okay. Yeah, exactly that in Honorary Games. No, you were talking about Syrup and the Ultimate Sweet when you were talking about the Nonary Game. Uh, Dan, this is a completely different game. <laughs> Besides, yes, I also have to make sure that I'll exist on Earth. Ha! Huh. That's one of a hell of, hell of an important task indeed. It is. That's got to be her dad then. My dad. Their dad. That's clever. I like that. So now I'm missing all achievements, special drinks, latte and trash. So I'm going to do those in my own time. Um, technically not the same stream. I did stop and start again. Where are we? I went in the screen. Okay, next. Oof. I got stuck again. That was a good game. So um, I'm not going to do any more of the syrup one or this one on stream. They're done now. Um, <laughs> same day. Okay, you win with the same day. Um, I will come back on... You know what? I might stream tomorrow. We will see. Um, because I have nothing better to do and the cinema's closed and no one's supposed to be going anywhere. So unless Jesse wants to stream or we could co-stream... I mean, you know, World's Oyster. If someone wants to co-stream, I'm happy to play, like, a butt-ton of Overcooked. You know, I'm happy to do that. We've still got two DLCs, um, though I don't know where the levels exist for those, but I'm sure I can find them. Not two DLCs, but um, two title updates. They didn't have any achievements, but they added more levels, so, you know, I could always do some Overcooked. I don't know. There's plenty to do, and I'll probably be back more times this week because working from home, I'm less tired. It's brilliant. So, yeah, I'll probably see you tomorrow, but if not, I'll be back on Thursday with The Clocker, which is a game that was funded by Ray. I think it was a happy Christmas or a happy birthday or a something like that present. But either way, thank you. But for now, I've had fun today. Um, Syrup and Ultimate Sweet wasn't that bad. Coffee Talk, brilliant. Glad to finish the story. Um, but for now, yeah, I've been Joe, otherwise known as Angel SK. Thank you so much for watching. And I will catch you very, very soon. But for now, 